Yes. Good. Good. Yes. 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 So you're going to forget this, but you can refer back to the old video. Um, so lachesis. Who has been through severe menopausal symptoms here? Anyone? I'm starting. You're starting to. Yes. Yes. You will do well with this. You'll feel like a different person. If you feel tired, etc., um, try. Or if you feel fatigued, then this is your recipe. If you have um, it, symptoms in sleep or digestive issues or a little bit of GERD or acid reflux or post-nasal drip at night, then lachesis is your, is your remedy. You know how I feel about words. Mm -hmm. You won't feel like a different person. You'll be more like the yeah, actual that's true. <laughs> Actually, that is more true than what I just said because that's what homeopathy does. Yes. It makes you more of who you really are. Mm -hmm. Yes. Is yes. it going to stop? The symptoms or uh, yes, it I'm will. Getting like pre, uh, pre. You're getting like pre. It'll stop, but it does. It's not a substitute for food. So you do have to eat lots of fats. What's happening in menopause is your ovaries are stopping their production of estrogen, and so your fat tissue and your other cells need to pick up the production, and you got to give them cholesterol. So egg yolks, you need lots of egg yolks in your diets. Mm -hmm. Hollandaise, egg yolks mixed with cream, and you need fats, rendered fats. Your your grandma probably cooked in lard or tallow. So saturated fats are critical for a good menopause. Your period pains will go away, your cramps will go away. So lachesis, all remedies, all medicine is after you've addressed the food problem, guys. It, it's not a substitute for, you can't live on air and do homeopathic remedies, right? So you've got to eat really good food. But if you're eating decent food and this happens, this is a remedy that will get you into a balance again. And be patient. I think it's important to be patient, to give it four to six weeks, any remedy. And, and, then, and then if it doesn't work, you can try another remedy. Uh, but there's one more thing, and that is taking the case is very critical. Uh, it's important that you know what symptoms you have, or you talk to someone, or you write them down, and then you look it up. You say, you know, it's literally based on what side of the bed you get up on, what side of your, which side you sleep on, which leg hurts more, right or left, right or over your left ovary problem. Where do you get pains when you have your periods? Some people have them in their left ovary, some have them... So it's so sophisticated, mm. I'm stunned that we don't have a similar system in allopathic medicine where we're asking the person, we're not taking MRIs, we're asking the person what ails you and how does it ail you. And, and for the same disease, there may be a totally different remedy for two different people who have slightly different symptoms. And if you take that, you get well, so you're not going to be taking them. <laughs> exactly. Yes, exactly. You're, mm -hmm. you are, the main thing is you're not going to take, uh, take medicines that have long-term effects. You can't get rid of the effects of antibiotics. You just, if, or they last for years. People get eczema, psoriasis, acne, down the road, gut disease, then Crohn's, then celiac. And all of these are a pyramid, the domino effect of one set of antibiotics you might have taken. The flu is getting worse, too, isn't it? Constant flu vaccines. Oh yes, and yes, and the same thing. Things oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, belladonna, high fever. You suddenly develop a very high fever, and this happens more in children than in adults. So your child is going to come in, um, play from playing, and one minute they're going to be fine, and the next minute they're going to develop 104 fever. Mom gets panicky, calls the pediatrician. What does he recommend? Huh? Well, aspirin and just exactly, and exactly. Yeah. Tylenol, paracetamol, aspirin. Those are deadly drugs with long-term side effects. Instead, give them belladonna. Within minutes, it'll start to have an effect. High fever, no sweat, no thirst, sudden onset. Belladonna is your remedy. The uh, the baby's pupils are expanded. This was the remedy that um, Hanuman used when there was a scarlet fever epidemic in town. So he just took his belladonna tincture in a big bottle, you know, uh, diluted, and went round house to house and gave everybody belladonna. There were no casualties in his town. And that's when he became famous and homeopathy took its roots. 
Nobody died in his town, and their people were dying like flies from scarlet fever in other towns. And they said, we want whatever he had. And so that's when homeopathy really took off. Is there a remedy for root canals? Uh, yes, there are remedies for root canals, absolutely. And those are infections. Yeah, those are infections. So therefore... Yeah, hepparsal would be, come to mind. But it would be based on that person... So a root canal is going to affect a person at their weakest point. For some people, it's going to give them joint problems, and they're going to get rheumatic disease. For some people, it's going to affect their heart. For some people, it's going to give them breast cancer. And so the remedies may well be different for different people for the, for the root canal. Thuya we talked about at length. If you have had lots of flu shots in your life and vaccines and such, Thuya is a great remedy. Uh, and cancer is a sort of a retaliation to all the vaccines caused by vaccines. Uh, brain tumors, we had a person you know, with brain tumors, so I stuck that in. That's the Banerjee protocol. Ruta Graviolin 6C combined with Calphos 3X. That's 10 times, not 100 times. Three, three pills three times a day for brain tumors. They have had phenomenal success with energies with uh, brain tumors, glioblastomas in particular. Wow. Can I ask a question? Um, is there any philosophy or theory about how many you should combine? I know some things, yes, yes. Oh, it should be an odd number and... Uh, yes, yeah, so there is theories. The classical homeopaths will disagree to providing anything but just one remedy for a long period of time. What the Banerjee's have done over the last 150 years by dint of trial and error, and because they had a thousand patients streaming in per day, uh, come up with protocols. And they've taken advantage of modern medicine and the diagnostics of modern medicine. In the old days, when someone came to Hanuman, he didn't know they had a brain tumor. He was looking at their constitution. So <clears throat> we have the benefit of this kind of sight that we didn't have before. So people are coming to the Banerjee's with x-rays in hand, MRIs in hand, blood tests and urine tests and glucose tests. So they know this person has diabetes or cancer of the breast or colon cancer. And they have fine-tuned techniques where they can do sort of blind prescription without looking at the person's constitution and catch 80% of the problems. And for the remaining 20%, they have a second line of homeopathic treatments. And for the very remaining 2-3%, they have a third line. So they have streamlined it to a world population of 7 billion and a lack of homeopaths. Because if you went to a homeopath, you would spend 2-3 hours just taking your history. You could not cover 500 million people with that kind of... There aren't enough people in the world. So, so this works. It's practical. And unbeknownst to them, a lot of people all over the world have taken the, these remedies, cured or re substantially shrunk their glioblastomas, and then they have written to the Banerjee's and said, hey, I want you to tweak it, or what should I do next? And so if you can you know, read the Banerjee protocols, they have written a lot of papers in a lot of uh, very um, respected journals. Um, you can read those as well. But that's for brain tumors, there's one for colon cancer, there's one for stomach cancer, and they don't hurt you. This is not chemo, this is not radiation, it's not surgery. No side effects. No side effects. And mm -hmm. it's the side effects that really kill you in modern medicine. It's not the drug, uh, the, your disease itself. Hepar for infections, wounds that get infected, pus, green pus, yellow pus, uh, fevers from infections, coughs that are like yellow and white in the throat. So you can see, if you're a mom, you want to get into the habit of peering down your children's throats and see, is it red, is it white and pussy, and you can accordingly give them the right remedy. So hepar salt is great for sore throats, strep throats, infections in the throat. Uh, you can give it every half hour until it goes away. What do you do for mucus? Hmm? Mucus. Mucus, that's kind of infected looking. If it's runny, then it's a slightly different uh, medicine. But if it's anything infectious, then hip ourselves is great. Sore throats, it's, it's the first go-to remedy. And the, and the reason we're putting these down is,
for many people who don't want to read a repertory or read 35 pages before, out of the 3,000 remedies, this is a place to start. This is a place to start. And then you go talk to your neighbor who said, oh no, Hiparsal did not work for me, but Bryonia did. Bryonia and this combination. And then you go there. Because you find that amongst a similar set of people, a similar set of remedies work. Because you've had the same background, same environmental factors, you're eating the same foods. And so that's where collaboration really helps for moms and neighbors. Uh, xanthomas. Xanthomas are these um, fatty cholesterol-like deposits on your skin. Uh, sulfur, I would highly recommend it, sulfur 200. And it comes with a whole bunch of other pictures, uh, uh, picture that, that I will go into in the next one. I don't have space for it now. But sulfur for xanthomas. Uh, Lachesis for menstrual, menopausal, hot flashes, sweats, palpitations. If you, mercurius is, is the remedy that Hanuman used for syphilitic patients who had been exposed to mercury. And so canker sores, sinuses, bed wetting, you were accidentally exposed to coal mining plants or coal and steel plants where you got a boatload of lead and mercury into your body. Canker sores, sinus problems, constant sinus infections, coughs, colds, everything is smelly, you salivate a lot. That's merc solubilis. You drool a lot at night or, you know, uh, from it could be from mercury-laden vaccines. It <clears throat> could be for mercury for syphilis. It could be mercury and lead and heavy metal poisoning from pollution, uh, whether it's car exhaust or industrial pollution. If you have that in your background, this is great. Pulsatilla. Every baby needs pulsatilla in their treatment, and they're teething, they're cranky, they're clingy. It works like a charm on my grandson. He gets extremely clingy. He wants to be picked up all the time. His nose is congested. His belly is a little bloated. He doesn't digest milk as well. Colds, coughs, teething. You give them a shot of pulsatilla, and they feel better. And give it every few hours if it's, uh, you know, a lot of symptoms. For someone with lingering coughs and colds, so you're, you know, you've been working 40, 50 hours a week, you keep going, you have these long commutes, and it's winter, and if you're in the Northeast, you're shoveling snow every day, and you're just tired, and you got this cough, and you didn't really recover from it, and now you got a cold, then you got a cough, silicia, silica, it's called silica for lingering coughs and colds. It worked with my son-in-law, it worked really well. Uh, if you have rheumatism or joint pain, rust tox is your remedy. Rheumatism. So that's kind of autoimmune. You know, your joint hurts, uh, joints hurt a lot. You're, you're in pain in winter months. You eat gluten or a casein or certain eggs. Your joints start hurting. Rust tox. 30C, 200C, depending on your symptoms. And don't be afraid the first time. And don't quit doing it if it doesn't work for like three hours. We're so used to wanting quick results. We don't, we're not patient. Urinary tract infections, gantharsis, 30C to 200C. I should have added one more to this metarhinum, metarhinum for deep stinging pains. Um, if gantharsis or staphysagria do not work. Um, Fractures. If you were in an accident, your sternum got broken, your ribs are bruised, some phytum 200C will do an amazing job. Some phytum 200C. Its common name is bone knit. Bone knit. There it is. And it's made comfrey. from comfrey. Yeah. Those big, giant leaved herbs. Pain and stiffness is worse in the cold. Add Roost Talks 30C to the some phytum. And also consider alternating with Arnica is a great thing when you have all these constant, you know, your back hurts, your elbows hurt, Arnica. If your child is slow at teething, Calcarea carbonicum. Or if they're getting their second set of teeth, you know how the first ones fall off and they get the second, or their wisdom teeth even, Calcarea carbonicum. There's some kids who get their wisdom teeth much later in life, and they get fevers and whatnot with that, with that. So, so that's a great remedy for that. Other acutes are carpal tunnel. This is, we're getting to the interesting part now. Uh, Ruta graviolens for carpal tunnel, 
So, you know, typists, typist fingers and wrists, you type too much, overuse hands, you do the same repetitive motions. Ruta, ruta. Staphys agria for mosquito bites. Uh, Soridum no sod. No sod is they take, you know, bad things, diseased parts, and make homeopathic remedies out of that. For ticks and fleas, um, I thought about, actually, I got it for the dogs. But uh, they're between their diet and all these other things, they don't get fleas and ticks anymore. They just don't. Last year, they used to get a lot of fleas and ticks. Zero, zero. Yeah. Uh, if dogs fear thunderstorms, or if you get anxious in a thunderstorm, Borax 6C. Kids get afraid of thunderstorms sometimes. Um, if you're sensitive to noise or a metallicum, uh, if you have lacerations, open wounds, uh, uh, hypericum, poison ivy, poison oak, anacardium, uh, unbearable teething pain. So if it's mild teething pain and the child is cranky, it's pulsatilla. <coughs> if they scream, if you touch them or pick them up, it's chamomile. If they scream from the pain, it's chamomile. Uh, Pulsatilla we talked about already. Um, you get uh, food poisoning, acute, violent vomiting, arsenicum album 30C or veratrum 30C. You can also take them in combination. You go to Bali, you get the Bali belly, you know, you eat this nice, uh, nasi lemak, and the next thing you know, you're going to the John 15 times arsenic of album, veratrum, or you're vomiting. If you have severe stomach aches, nasuamika or colosynthesis, so if you have cramps, so crampy that you're bent over, then uh, nasuamika or colosynthesis. So when you're traveling, it's a good idea. You go to Mexico, you go to Bali, even Europe. When you go there the first time, people get the Europe belly because the French. Um, you know, a lot of the, the French sewer system is old. Um, you know, there's a, it all goes into the Seine, and a lot of people, and in their homes, because my daughter has a home which was built in the 1800s. Let me tell you a story. And whenever people build second toilets, guess where they run into? They put the plumbing into the water supply. And there's a lot of that going into the water supply. So if you get a Paris belly, one of these two is a, is a good thing. In Mumbai, the water and sewer pipes are going adjacent to each other for several kilometers, and they rusted. And guess what happened? Yeah, yeah. And so what you want is a constitution that can handle these kinds of stresses and traumas. You won't die. Put it this way. There are kids who die from diarrhea and vomiting. As soon as that starts happening in a child, please administer that right away. You will not have to put IV in them in a hospital or rush them to emergency. Uh, acutes for the flu. The Banerjee protocol is aconitum 200C, bryonia 200C. Every person who has had the flu in the last year needs to get this. And instead of getting antibiotics or going to the ER, please start with this. At the first sniffle, fever, ache, and it won't even go there. If you feel as if your bones are breaking, your whole body is hurting so much that someone's taking a hammer to your bones, mm -hmm. add eupatorium perfoliatum to that. So eupatorium is very good for intense bone aches. Mm -hmm. yeah. And different people will get different types of flu. So just remember these two things. Start with the Banerjee protocol, but if you have intense pain, start with this. In the UK, the pharmacies actually sell this. Age, they call it A, G, and E. Aconite, gelsimium, and eupatorium. Aconite, belladonna, and uh, carbovege for if you have fever, uh, with some stomach issues, cough, and um, it appears suddenly. If a fever happens very suddenly, and then within the 24 hours, you eat aconite. And these can be taken together. Hence, remember the acronyms AGE and ABC. If accompanied by a cough, if you're doing carp and a fever, you're doing the ABC. If accompanied by great pain, but not cough or diarrhea or fever, you do the AGE. And this is the Banerjee protocol, which works really well. Or if you just feel bruised and have pain in your bones, 
just take this. So this is something I would recommend. At least two of these, any two of these, you should have in your repertoire. You need Aconite 200, Bryonia 200, Eupatorium, you can have 30 or 200, but have something. And don't worry if you have nothing. Just use, you don't have these, just use what you have. Just use Arnica. If you have Arnica, just use Arnica. It's better than not doing anything. So the key is not to worry about these things. You know some things, but you don't know many others. You know, there are, the, they, they say 6,000 remedies. We're never going to know all those remedies. You know, Hanuman came up with about 99, and the balance were developed in these last couple hundred years. And we're never going to have the memory or the inclination to. But these basic remedies will cover most of your problems. And leave it for that, you know, other odd duck to try out new remedies. And if they work, put them into your repertoire. Uh, but you don't have to overthink it. You don't have to overthink it. So that's a so show where do you buy all your rum? I know they have good earth, they have. Uh, yeah, Whole Foods has them, Good Earth has them, I believe, Molly Stones has them, Woodlands has them. And you just said Sprouts has a sale. Sprouts yeah, has a sale. They on, sell the, on the Borum. Yeah. Okay. That's the company. One is the company. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, and and if you order from Boron online, I'll give you a coupon code later. Oh. Yeah. 20% or something discount. Okay. Chronics, eczema, and acne. These are really digestive problems. These are digestive problems, eczema, itchy skin. This is a great protocol. It's a Banerjee protocol. Arsenicum album 200 and antimonium crude 200, two twice a day. Both twice a day. One pull of each twice a day. Together. Eczema that gets worse in winter with cracks. So there was someone that wanted to know about eczema. Her a certain treatment worked for one son, but didn't work for the other one. And that was because that eczema got worse in winter with cracks, and so petroleum 200 works for that. Cystic acne, any um, face eruptions, close to your menses, lachesis 200, three times a day. And then you be in charge of tapering it or increasing it, you will see by your symptoms whether it works or not. Okay, now we're getting to the interesting parts. These are the chronics. So up until now, we were doing the acutes. When you are of a certain age, you're done with all the acutes, and then there's the chronics, which could be a cause of the culmination of the acutes, either not treated or mistreated, or constitutional issues, or a whole bunch of environmental and other pollutants that got in the way of your vital force. So. So I would recommend for M so the, the Banerjee protocol is actually plumum metallica, but if you sit down with a person uh, with MS and go through all their symptoms, there's a whole bunch of things that are appropriate, and it could be or metallica, it could be natrum muriatricum, it could be chelidonium, it could be plumum metallicum, alumina, or gelsimium. And so I would recommend these three. I would recommend three, these one, and three. three. Uh, one, two, three. Or a Metallicum 200, Natrum Muriatricum 200, uh, start with three, three times per day. And, and Chelidonium, this is liver glucose issues. Start with this and then see how it goes. And again, I could have easily said plumum, but it didn't fit the symptom picture, if you see what I'm saying. A lot of the things that are applicable to that person are what go into the remedy. The dosage for the one, two, and three is, did you say three times daily? Uh, yeah, these are three times daily to start with. One pill of each, three times daily. And this you might want to take um, once a day at a different time. Just so you know, on the blue tubes, like the boron tubes, they'll say like five pellets under your tongue. Yes. But um, we found that you yes. don't really need to do that. Yeah, one, one is, I, I would recommend one pill. It is the same as eating five pills. But if you feel good doing the five pills, by all okay. means, go for the five pills. So that's MS. And there's a huge, huge symptom picture that goes with Aurum Metallicum. And 
you know, maybe next time we walk through that. But take a look at the repertories, and they will sh they will say this person it gets hot, gets hot, gets hot very easily. You know, they want cold, they want air conditioning in summer. Um, you know, right side affected, not the left side. You know, heart palpitations or cardiac issues. Um, some of them accompany this, some of them don't. So, so the symptom picture that fits the best, mm -hmm. starting from the emotional to the physical, is what you want to use. Uh, and once you're confident that you have taken the full case and got the symptom picture, be confident and do it. Do it for six, seven weeks and see what happens. But the key is to write things down. How much can I move my leg today? What range of motion do I have? What is my level of heatedness or coldness? How did I sleep that last night? You know, all, all of those things. How do, how do I feel at a mental level? Do I feel depressed or do I feel energetic? Do I feel happy, euphoric, etc.? So if you write it down, and the way I would recommend you write it down is, and that will make e it easy for me to read what you write as well. Go from the head to the toe. Go from the mind, neck, skin, abdomen, heart, legs. Just write it down. Because even you're going to forget. Even if you're treating somebody else, you will forget. So create a file folder for each member of your family. And just stick little, you can write them on paper towels even, but stick little notes. I started with 30C of this today, and these were the symptoms and then you just tick it in. You don't have to have computer programs or elaborate notebooks and so on. So that's multiple sclerosis. Um, constipation, so there's an aggregation of symptoms. It's constipation, it's uh, numbness, it might be tingling, it might be a little bit of blood sugar uh, issues. So you want to look at the right remedy picture. And their background. Bandages have a, a repertory or um, a term medica that Yes, they do. It's awesome. Yes. Yes. And uh, their protocol actually calls for a plumum metallicum. But in this particular instance, we thought ORM was the way to go. And, uh, and these are all used for multiple sclerosis, all these remedies. But they would be different for different people. Celiac disease. Celiac is an intolerance to gluten. Somewhere along the line, you ate enough of the had enough shots and antibiotics and vaccinations and GMO foods and, and pesticides and Roundup and you develop intolerance to the very foods that you love, wheat amongst them. The staff of life, my ancestors lived on wheat for 5,000 years and now we're finding people in my family cannot tolerate it. You know, uh, all the hybrids and the endogenetic, I got to go off on this, the endogenetic delta plains had been nurtured for 5,000 years. And then Indira Gandhi, our then Prime Minister, started this green revolution with a hybridized variety of wheat, fertilizers, and pesticides. The farmers were up to their eyeballs in debt. And the first, I think, 10 years, they had bumper crops that fed the nation. And then the soil started eroding. We have like 200 farmer suicides every week. Yeah. Um, they are poverty stricken. They are in debt. They cannot afford the inputs, and there's no food. <coughs> and so, Monsanto. Oh, Monsanto, yes. Yes, Monsanto, yes. 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 It's very sad. It's very sad. And they're all getting cancer. Entire farmer families are dying of cancer, and the customers can't eat the wheat. You know, what's the point? So celiac, a protocol is Ipecac 30C, Mercurius Solubilis 6C, taken thrice daily at the same time. Um, Bovista is specifically for gluten and other food intolerances. <clears throat> and arsenicum album if you have diarrhea. Because a lot of celiacs and people with Crohn's and colitis have diarrhea. SOS means as needed. Which one's for diarrhea? Uh, arsenicum album. And you can start with 30C, okay? You don't have to. Unless you have a chronic, chronic disease, do the minimum dose. Arsenicum, you know, 6C, 30C. This is for when you have chronic... Five, ten times a day you have diarrhea, arsenic on album 200C. We'll halt it in its tracks. Um, asthma is a funny disease. Many children have asthma, grown-ups have asthma, you get asthma. Asthma gets triggered frequently from pollution, 
antibiotics, post vaccines, post some drug therapy, and they're all different. And so homeopathy has this fascinating array of different remedies for different types of asthma triggered in different people in different ways. And while this is not a one remedy answer, I just wanted to put this here so you see the the range, you know, the range. Because children, you might your child might have <clears throat> suffocative cough, wheezing, worse at midnight, and it alternates with eczema. If that's the case, you want to do arsenicum. If you have asthma with a dry cough and warm drinks make it better, then it is probably spongia tosta. If it's asthma with excessive loose rattling cough, uh, lungs fill up. So it's asthma could be here, it could be up to here, and it could be all the way down. Um, lungs filled with mucus, then it's antimonium tart, tartaricum. If it's asthma in children, it's one of the two, typically, Ipecac and Sambucus nigra, and they have different symptoms, and I can talk to you about those as well. Dulcamara and Nat Sulfuricum, asthma triggered in damp weather, so it specifically happens to be the British, you know, monsoon season. The second it starts raining, people, kids get asthma, Dulcamara and Natrum Sulfuricum. Um, Nux vomica for asthma in winter, if you get asthma. Uh, Blata orientalis and bromian for asthma triggered by dust exposure. Happens to a lot of contractors that I know. They go build homes and cement, and there's this grass with all sorts of pollen, and they develop this asthma. Uh, Carbo veg and senega for asthma in the elderly, particularly beneficial in the elderly. And they each have their own pictures you got to select from. Isn't that fascinating? All of these yeah. things are fascinating. And uh, a doctor could never be bothered with this. Why yeah. should they? They're not going to make money. If they have to read through all these things to give your kid a uh, medication, they'll be out of business. You know, They have to spend no more than five minutes with your child. So, of course, they're going to give you what? Albuterol, which doesn't work for me, by the way. Never worked for me. People of um, Asian and Mexican de descent, albuterol does not work. I learned it the hard way by not having it work, and I just get the jitters, you know. Um, so, uh, lobelia inflata for asthma and smokers, very critical. Asthma and smokers is very different than asthma in other folks. Lobelia inflata. Smokers cough. Smokers cough. Mm -hmm. Hapar sulf is one of the most effective remedies for smokers cough that is loose or rattling. If it's not loose or rattling, tell me and I will give you a different one. But for loose and rattling cough, it's uh, Hiparsol 30C, three times a day, try it for several weeks. And you can actually, if it's a long-term smoker, you might want to have on hand 200C as well. 30C and 200C. Just get it, start with the 30C. If it doesn't work, go to the 200C. Cough is worse during the morning. Is that true? Cough is worse during the morning? Cough is worse during the morning? Mm -hmm. Or you can't tell? Phlegm is yellow, pus like, maybe blood stain. Yeah. Suffocative attacks, sometimes wheezing and breathing difficulty uh, may loosen up cough. So, when they take it, um, like for this particular case, so does that mean the phlegm would melt and then. The melt? condition, the body will become stronger and the body will deal with that cough such that they don't have those symptoms. So the cough will literally... Yeah. I mean, I'm just saying, so when I'm yeah. taking notes... Yeah, when you're taking notes, the cough will... Oh, good, very good point. The, the, the time between the coughing spells will increase. The duration of each cough will decrease. So if, if he was coughing every 10 minutes or every hour, then it might extend to every two hours. The, the distance between the coughing spells. If he was coughing for 10 minutes continuously, it might decrease from 10 minutes to 5 minutes. That's when you know your remedy is working and you keep doing it. So notes are very important. Until, until he stops coughing? Or? Until he stops coughing. Okay. So I'm just going to monitor from the 4 to 6 minutes. Yeah, yeah. We'll monitor it. And then take the cigarettes out of it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that was a bad day. Don't put that. You passed that stage. You passed so that stage. That's true. Yeah. But this will help. Seven months without smoking, yeah. but still wow. coughing. 
Oh, that definitely. So oh, that's I just awesome. Want to know so when it yes, yes, yes. It will. It will be. You will see. You shall see. <clears throat> Absolutely. Want to see if that's a miracle? Yeah. Ooh, and I expect a miracle. Uh, and and the miraculous part is this: smokers who have this cough in winter develop pneumonia, and when they're given antibiotics for the pneumonia, what do they get next? It's worse. Though. They get cancer. Yeah. yeah, and then you would fill up the green lungs. Yes, because what are the antibiotics doing? They're driving the disease deeper. And I have had several friends who were fine. They just smoked merrily for many, many years, and then their children, out of the goodness of their heart, made them take antibiotics for pneumonia. They got <laughs> dead the next year. Died of lung cancer. Mm. Okay. Uh, they were fine doing their own thing, you know, they would get the pneumonia. What the pneumonia is doing is it's an adaptive mechanism. It's getting the crap out of the lungs mm -hmm. that that the smoking has created. So when you have pneumonia, when you have fevers, they're curative. They are curative. Mm -hmm. And that is a very dif difficult concept for us to grasp and handle. Mm -hmm. When your child has a fever, the body is curing itself. Yeah. And so mom should not go off in a panic or give Tylenol yeah, to reduce the fever doctor. unless the child is seizing, in which case you put wet towels on their head to keep them from having seizures. But the fever is what is curing that child's disease, as is the pneumonia. So when, for the elderly, you will find that they get pneumonia, uh, medications for pneumonia, they die the next year. So Not only that, they give you shots on top mm -hmm. of that. To add so what do you take for pneumonia? I know somebody you know. Oh, Hepar okay. okay. I, was, yeah. I wasn't sure. Yeah. They're not yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. just got it from some other... And the first sense. sign of an infective illness, Hepar 30, and there's others if they have a different constitution. But start with that, You, I can almost guarantee you'll have results. And so Hepar self, if you have a smoker in your family, if you have a person who gets pneumonia or the flu every single year, you want to have this in a couple of different potencies. So it's there. So when it happens, you're not you're not panicking or scrabbling around. I don't think um, Whole Foods has a bar self in 200. They have some remedies in 200, but I'm not sure. But online, any of these will have them. If you have, okay, diabetes, next. And I was hoping... Um, uh, Ralph would be here. Anyhow, Cisium Jambo Lanum Q. This is a mother tincture, five drops, three times a day. And for anyone with blood sugar issues, I would recommend it. I would recommend the first it. One. The first one. Chelidonium 6C, more liver metabolism and how liver metabolism affects you. You know, you have glycogen in your liver that converts to glucose when the adrenals uh, uh, take off or kick in from stress. Uh, Chelidonium 6C works for neuropathy and diabetes, plumbum metallicum, but in the case of orum, it's covered with the orum, so you don't need to take plumbum specifically for neuropathy. Uh, Bryonia, if you're very thirsty, have dry lips, constipation, and are petite. That's the primary symptom of your diabetes. Uranium nitricum or natrium sulfuricum for excessive, the people who get up to pee, 10 times a night and they get bad a bad night's sleep and they have diabetes or insulin resistance, uranium nitricum, natrium sulfuricum. And then for thrush of diabetes, because you have sugar, you have a lot of fungus, helonious, uh, fungal infections, this is great. And that's not just thrush, it could be fungal infections in your nails, head, belly, inside your body. Um, if it's thrush, it's profuse, thick, creamy discharges, severe itching and soreness, smelly, yellow staining, discharge, rawness and itching, polonius and creosotum. Start with 30 C. Can I just ask that one for the um, excessive urination? That doesn't matter whether it's diabetes or not. You said um, except, yeah, you can try it for non-diabetes too. Okay. Yeah, Uranium nitricum is great, natrium sulfuricum is great also. Did you say 30 C? 30 C, yeah. And again, uh, the 30C is, an, uh, is a standard, and if the person has, you know, urinates 30 times a night, you might want to consider the 200s. Uh, thirst, there's a lot of thirst with diabetes, and bryonia is great. 
the dryness, dry lips, thirst, excessive thirst. And so now we're going to talk about heart disease, which is something that's going to happen to a lot of people. We live longer and we have a lot of stresses and strains on our body. We don't take aconitum when shock and trauma hits and boom, all of a sudden you have dads, you know, getting cardiac arrest, you know, your child has an accident, uh, mom gets a heart attack. So this is from a real person, a friend of mine who was had congestive heart failure. She calls the ambulance, the ambulance took her to Kaiser and they immediately started her on a whole bunch of things. Lasix, the diuretic, to get the fluids out of the lungs. They're given for high blood pressure, Lasix-like drugs. But what do they do? Chest and jaw pains, ankle swelling, muscle cramping, dizziness, vertigo, fatigue, dry mouth, weight gain, memory loss, bloated stuff. Does this sound like a healing, healing medicine to you? Reduce kidney function, it destroys your kidneys eventually. Eventually destroys them. You need to get enough potassium. You need to eat a lot more potassium if you're on LASIK. You must drink nourishing soups, stews, and minerals to counteract these side effects. And I did. I took these to her, and she loved them, but she was still on LASIK. Sounds like it's an advertisement for homeopathy. Yes, <laughs> that's exactly right. So, I mean, the drug list just goes on, and this is their, the standard of care. Standard of care is not based upon what you need, but what will keep the doc doctors and hospitals butt out of fire in the event of a lawsuit. So this is not about you at all. Lasix is a diet. Zosin is a very powerful antibiotic. Why would you give a heart patient Zosin when they land in hospital? They just do, because that's what they do. Given to ward off infections. And where do you get infections the most? Everyone has an answer to that. Yes. Hospitals are your biggest source of non-repairable infections today. I had two next-door neighbors who went in for day surgeries and were on respirators for two months. They got hospital wow. in-line infections through those draining tubes. For those wow. My sister got nursed. Yes. yes. Wow. It's terrible. So if you want to die, you go to a hospital. <laughs> but the powerful antibiotics are given to ward off infections. What did you do? You bulldozed your gut bacteria. And for the next 10, 15 years, even if you tried, you couldn't get them back because these are powerful antibiotics. So, you, so now you've got, you made a carpet, red carpet treatment for the, for the pathogenic bacteria to enter your system. And that's where they get the MRSAs and the C. difficile, pneumonia, bacteria, etc. And so you get the, uh, they are also given, and, and they cause nausea and bleeding because they're given with aspirin. How many people are told to eat a baby aspirin for heart disease? It actually causes heart disease. Clopidogrel, heparin, blood thinners, anti-clotting agents. Your skin gets severely bruised. And then you can eat arnica. But I would recommend you don't do any of those things. You don't have to eat arnica. Fentanyl is a very acute painkiller. And you get addicted. Side effects are fever, rashes, itching, constipation, brain fog. And you get aspirin for life after that. And so, so this friend of mine, we, she was on board for natural healing. But when this happened, and it happened because she was on PPS, proton pump inhibitors, for 20 years. Mm -hmm. They give you a heart attack. Mm -hmm. We know that. And she yeah. was on proton pump inhibitors because she was on a very high carbohydrate, very vegan diet. She didn't have fats in her belly. She didn't have proteins. So... One thing led to another, led to a heart attack, led to all of these, and then she made the decision to stick with the Kaiser protocol because she said, thought, what if yours doesn't work? And, and I'm going, look at you. You've got big red patches all over your body. Your face is the size of a raccoon, a puffed up. You know, you can't walk. You can't talk. You can't get out of bed. Is, is that health? But... Um, we are frequently brainwashed into thinking that these are the things that will yeah. save us. If you don't take what they recommend, you're non-compliant. Yeah. 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 And, you know, I was there, and I asked the doctor, why are you doing this? Why? Are you? And he got really annoyed with me. Yeah. I remember taking some prunes into somebody in the hospital for diarrhea. They almost shot me in the hospital. Yes. Mm. I was carted out by the... Uh, <laughs> And they will not let you take homeopathic, so you better smuggle them in, you know. Yeah. And so every time you get a pill, you toss it out and eat the homeopathic, and you'll 
I guarantee get out of hospital alive and, and, and in better health. They don't do that anymore. Huh? They will scan your tags. That's and true. They make you take the pill in front of them. Oh, yes. Oh. You're right. You're right. I've had six clients of them to watch that. Oh, wow. What, what they are they doing now? They, you have a band with yeah. your admitted. So every time they come to administer, they're going to scan the tag. And they're gonna watch you swallow. Oh wow! Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. if you don't, don't they it. don't leave the room until you. That's terrible. Oh, that that that's that's so and wow! If you that's can't not solve, what they do now, they inject, they put it into the IV. Oh room. my god! So wow. the hospital says yes. in general. I've been to uh, no John Muir and uh, I don't know. Yeah. See, yeah. and that IV is something everybody needs to refuse. My daughter was having a baby, and they said it is standard protocol to put IV. And I said, why are you doing that? She said, oh, she might get dead. You know what the IV was for? So that they could put all yes. sorts of drugs in without permission at the last moment um, and, and get away with it. And that was in France. In France, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, great case for home births. It's just protocol. That's what they do. Mm -hmm. And they did. They put in gas, laughing gas. They put in painkillers. And I said, why are you doing that? Oh, just in case she gets an infection. This is protocol. Then this they put the a infection. giant yeah, antibiotic in. I said, why are you putting antibiotics? The baby is going to get... They said, no, that's protocol. That's cool. And at that point, you can't walk that person out of hospital because she's in the middle the of having a baby. And so baby was born with... So we had to do a lot of de-traumatizing for the, my poor grandson. And, but, but that's what they do. That's, that's what you're fun. signing up for. And they don't tell you that when you're in labor. They say, we'll only do it at the very end. We will promise we will not put anything into it. But they do. Mm -hmm. But they do. Where yeah. I come from, they have a homeopathic hospital. I know. Really? You are one of the lucky, no, lucky and it's people. The, with the name of the, um, the guy. Oh, I yeah, we're in London. It's in, it's in Liverpool. Because I used to go to school there, to, there. And I used to pass by all the time. Oh, oh, it's small, but they had a homeopathic. The homeopathic, the hospitals have the far lower death rate, sepsis, septicemia rate, cure rate. I mean, hands down, their outcomes are way better. And the Banerjee protocols have evidence of the last almost 100 years to prove that some of these things, a lot of these things work. Heparin, anticoagulant, why should you have an anticoagulant? Your body made coagulation for a purpose. Uh, side effects are bleeding and in severe cases thrombosis, so you you get a stroke or clot, and then you die of that instead of a heart attack. So you got saved from congestive heart failure, but you die of, you know, thrombotic clots. Clavix, same thing, prevents clots after a heart attack. So they're giving um, Jacqueline Hyde medicine, one medicine that prevents it, one that causes it. Zofran is an anti-nausea pill with severe side effects, stomach cramps, pins and needles. You should replace it with ginger and lemon if you feel nauseous. So you can't. You are allowed to reject all these things, but you got to actively do it or don't go there. Morphine, you get hooked on it. My friend was hooked on sedatives. And then uh, aspirin is just, it depletes your minerals. It causes nausea, vomiting, destroys your liver, inhibits lipolysis, you know, fat breakdown so you can't eat fatty acids. So it affects how you eat, how you digest, and how you assimilate and never, never take e vitamin E to, taken with aspirin will cause excessive bleeding. It causes malabsorption of food. You mm -hmm. don't have food. You don't have life. Uh, PPIs will counter the side, of, uh, side effects of aspirin, and, and they are probably the deadliest of all substances. Mm -hmm. Proton pump inhibitors will cause uh, nitric acid synthase to not um, be generated, and your capillary is not to dilate, and it's one of the biggest causes of heart attacks, especially in women. Mm -hmm. they, they were menopausal, they had digestive symptoms, the doctor gave them PPIs, they are eating a high-carb, low-fat, low-protein diet, they were vegan, so they're malnourished, uh, and they take PPIs for more than six weeks. Now they can't absorb minerals, they can't absorb minerals, and they're capillaries cannot dilate and then they are ripe victims for heart attacks for which you get all of this and so what they did with her was i showed the doctor the paper that i think texas md anderson texas anu a &E university had done this on um, proton pump inhibitors and heart 
a text, and I gave it to the doctor, and he said, oh, I'm not giving her Prilosec. He gave her another proton pump, oh, wow. four times more high, higher strength. And, um, you know, you can't, she was 80. My friend was 80, she was out of it, she just took it, you know. Okay, and statins. Let's not even go there because that's, what they didn't do was magnesium. Magnesium is the drug you get, the, the mineral you give for heart. And I said, aren't you going to put that in her IV? I asked the doctor, and he said, we don't do magnesium, that's a mineral. <laughs> and I'm going, yeah, like the body needs minerals. It shines the brightest in cardiovascular health. If you have a heart problem, eat foods rich in magnesium, eat magnesium that can be easily assimilated in your body. Estrogen compounds, patches, hormone, progesterone, all deplete your magnesium, which is why women on birth control, women with patches, get heart attacks. Eating a high sugar diet depletes magnesium, and you need magnesium, but it's not the standard of care. Magnesium is not the same. If they had taken out all of these drugs when she came to a hospital and instead given her magnesium, I guarantee she would have gotten out much earlier with none of the problems that she had for the next couple of years. So that's just the segue to say food is, there's no substitute for food. And if you want to take remedies, please take homeopathic remedies for heart disease. There are fabulous, fabulous remedies. So the first thing I would do is wean her off of the aspirin because she's now on aspirin, right? With Arnica for pain. Arnica for pain, MAGFOS 6X for angina, so the, the heart pain, um, or Simicifuga 30C daily, also for angina, Digitalis for the irregular heartbeat, Sicale uh, Cornutum for blockage prevention, and also regulation of blood pressure. So that's something that's a very, very good remedy. Um, and a mother tincture of something called Cartigas Oxyacantha. Um, for blood pressure, yeah. 1 to 15 drops. So I would say 3 drops 3 times a day, and that will directly address blood pressure issues, and this one to address circulation in other ways, but it will also correct blood pressure. Or a metallicum for people with heart problems are depressed, or a metallicum for depression, and to prevent heart attacks, it will prevent heart attacks. So, or a metallicum is a very powerful remedy and very curative remedy. Arsenicum, or an arsenicum 200, if you are in the middle of a heart attack. So if you feel that in your family you have members who are likely to have heart attacks, you should have this remedy on hand. You shouldn't be chasing after it on Amazon after the event, because you want to give it right away. I don't know about the preparation, but strophanthus. And strophanthus, yes. It's a very important thing. Yes. It's for the heart. Strophanthus. For the heart. Yeah. Homeopathic strophanthus. Uh, yeah, that's that's an amazing, amazing cardiotonic. Anyone with anything hard. And you get it, Boiron, I think, has it. I think most of the homeopathic firms have it. <clears throat> and so, to, to, this is how you do it for, for someone who's had congestive heart failure, Arnica Montana, three or six X, a small amount twice daily for the pain, the heart pain, chest pain. Magnesium phosphoricum, six X, also small, twice daily. Critigus, uh, five drops twice daily. Sea kale cornutum, 30 C twice daily. Digitalis, twice daily. And these are for different types of symptoms, so you would create a remedy picture for that person and tweak it a little bit. Arsenicum, um, orum arsenicum for every 30 minutes in an emergency. So if you have a spouse who has a heart attack, at 30C every 30 minutes, followed by twice daily for months until the emergency is cleared. Mm -hmm. And Arnica Montana 200, got to have Arnica 200 every 30 minutes alternating with orum arsenicum in a cardiac emergency. And strophanthus. Strophanthus is... An amazing cardiotonic. Another short of breath. And I don't, I don't know if it's, um, I don't know how standard process does all of its stuff, but I have this, which is Cardio Plus, which was oh, minerals. Recommended. It's minerals, yeah. Minerals. Minerals. That's awesome. 
It has magnesium in it for magnesium rich things. Read. And also the magnesium, I take the salate. Is that the one? Sure, take? sure. Yeah. yeah. But understand that you don't need it if you don't have a problem. Right. So, well, I don't know. Yeah, I think yeah, I yeah. Mm-hmm. If you don't, because supplements in general, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm mortally opposed simply because of where they're made, how they're made, the quality, and nothing beats food. You know, you yeah. want to eat liver way better than a pill. Okay, dosage and duration. You want to strike for the minimum. Children especially, you want low doses. Except when it's very acute, then it's slightly 30C is enough for most kids. You do it um, the minimum dose until you start to feel better. This is not an allopathic treatment, so you don't keep giving that dose of antibiotics for 20 days, or else you know you you are in trouble. As soon as you start to feel better, all you're doing is training the body in a direction, and once it's off to the races, you back off. You back off with the remedy. So you start to do it until you feel better. If the symptoms become worse, you give a little bit more until you feel better. And then if it's gone, you quit. You don't have to do it. Could it be if the symptoms get worse, though? You yeah. have a higher potency. You need to get it. Or could it be that it's the wrong it's one? Proven. Yes. And yes. therefore, yes. it's causing. Yes. Yeah. Could be. If you take a remedy that's totally unrelated to what you have, you will get the symptoms of that remedy, and that's called approving. You're proving it, but it's rare because, by and large, people tend to be guided towards you know the right way. It's not a supplement. You don't need to take it every day, and reading is very helpful. Especially, you know, you're gonna get if if you say I have high blood pressure, right? Different. You go to five homeopaths, they're gonna give you five different things. Uh, you have to decide what the right one for you is, by, and you can only get that by reading. Mm-hmm. So read, you know, five different people's repertories on that, and you, your homeopath, I'll bet you, didn't ask you all the questions that you have answers to. Like, you know, which eye flutters, you know, you'll see that in the rep- repertory. Yeah. And, and from that, you can say, this is the most appropriate remedy for yeah. me. And take this. So be your own doctor, observe a lot, especially with family members. Because Richard will never tell me when he's in pain. He's he could be in abject sure. bad pain, and he goes, hmm, "My back's hurting a bit," you know? <laughs> and, and so and he's dying of the pain. Whereas if I was in pain, I would be howling, you know. So um, you have to know your family and observe them. So I can't even take him to a homeopath because he won't tell them. He won't tell them. It's okay. You have constipation. Yeah, sometimes. No. It's really bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I feel okay. How do you sleep? Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. And and then uh, then you observe and then you put in the improvements. And so that's the dosage and duration. Typically, for acute, uh, four doses should work. Like if it's a trauma, by the second dose you should feel better. If it comes again, you do it again. Uh, but you know it's working if, it, if there's improvement. Uh, antidote, if something didn't work, if you pick the absolute wrong remedy, you should have Camphor 200 in your arsenal to wipe out the effects of the previous remedy. Or drink a cup of coffee. Or a mint yeah. tea. <laughs> That'll antidote the previous remedy. Um, and then you go to the next one. Oh, that didn't work. But give it a chance. Okay, to remind me, if mint tea will be an antidote, don't drink mint tea while you're doing yes, the homeopathic. Yes, 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 yes. Or around your uh, remedies. Mm-hmm. Coffee, mint tea, camphor, volatile oils, where things with strong smells will antidote it. Um, how do you know it's working? That's a very big question that people have. Mm-hmm. What does this piece? Yeah, what does it mean? Geez, you're giving me a sugar pill first. My husband says it's all woo, and uh, the allopathic doctor says it's a bunch of baloney, and I don't know. Uh, so what you will see afterwards is changes. So it won't be miraculous in all instances. In acutes it can be, but in chronic it's not going to be. But you will see degrees of improvement. So you can't be 
you know, have chronic migraines every day for two hours and then get better in one day. But the intensity of the migraines will diminish. The time between each migraine will increase. And you can measure that. So you should have a scale of 1 to 10. Intensity, duration, time between episodes. Like if you have seizures, you know. There are, if you get a seizure every 30 seconds, that's bad, right? But if you get a seizure every one hour, that's better, right? So you have improved. So, in t so vital force increases the person, and it always starts at the emotional and mental level first. The person starts to feel better almost right away. They have a sense of hope. They have a sense of optimism uh, because their mind is sort of at the at the at the uh, starting point of the cure. So they start feeling better first, and then the functional and other symptoms change. The duration wanes over time. So you got to uh, time out. You got to scale it one to ten. Uh, you got to have acute observation. Um, and that's a different way of looking at disease and healing. And the children, thank you, thanks for coming. Thank you. Um, uh, don't ask your children because they're never going to be able to tell you. But you can see the symptoms, you know, they're starting to get ready to become cranky. Or women can sometimes predict when they're going to vomit in the car. They start going, ah, oh, mom, I feel weird. And you stop the car and they puke outside. So you will start to observe symptoms and then take notes because you're going to forget everybody forgets. And mainly don't stress. Never stress about anything. You can make a fresh decision every three hours. And you know, one other thing I'm taking is a Chinese herb mm -hmm. called Dan Shen. Okay. And it, it reinforces the parasympathetic end, which cuts the stress. That is key. That is key. Is that a key? Hmm? I think I, I just take it in a pill form. Where'd you get that from? I got it from to Dr. Cowan. Um, so how to be successful? First, don't quit. Don't quit. Uh, don't lose hope because it's a lot of stuff. Uh, start with simple things. Just start with a few remedies, and then see how it goes. Read a little bit. See how it goes. So another way of saying it, instead of don't quit, is stay with it. Yeah. Stay with it. it. Yes. It. Yes. <laughs> stay with the protocols. Or give it a chance. Yes. Give it a chance. Be patient. Yes. Um, and uh, get organized. Get organized because I don't remember. You know, sometimes when you have pain, intense pain, you take a remedy, the pain goes away. And it goes away. You just feel good. And you don't even think about it. And then you don't remember whether the remedy worked or not until you go back to your notes and it said 10 on pain. So take notes. You you want to uh, have a folder per family member, note taking. for, And then these notes you can gift to your children upon their marriage or leaving the house. And, and they can carry on. Because those remedies will apply to their constitution for life. Um, Put the date, the condition, the scale of the issue, the remedy, the potency, and then every child, different remedies work. So you will know what to do for child number one versus child number three, if you're organized. And that's that's how you study it. So you look at all the symptoms and put them on one axis. You put all the remedies that are applicable to those symptoms, and the one with the most numbers gets prescribed. And so you could have a remedy. So in this case, it's sepia. This has the most numbers. Mind, anxiety, fear, trembling, fright, generalities, uh, da, 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 da. This is the one with the most numbers. But it could be two. Or it could be one with a higher number, one with a slightly lower number. And that'll work. That's the beauty. And that is that other remedies will work as well. Which is why different homeopaths give different remedies. And they work. Because they address the symptoms in a different way. But... If you're being organized, that's what you're going to do. I have these 10 symptoms, and these are the remedies that those symptoms are applicable to. Which one meets most of these symptoms? And that's what a study group is. That's what essentially what we're doing here. You know, we're looking at a whole bunch of symptoms and saying, this is a potential remedy, and then coming out with 
um, a, a set of remedies that we take, and then they either work or they don't. Okay, that's it. Yeah, Go back. Yeah, you can shut off that. Okay. Let me shut this off. Thank you, everybody.